Hello actors, it's Noel from the Actors Feedback Forum. And today I want to give you props. Well, I want to give you kudos. Kudos on your props. Kudos on your props usage. We're going to talk about whether or not we should be using props in a self-taped audition. The opinions on this run the gamut and you'll get a different opinion from everybody you ask about it. Some people will say absolutely not, never use props. Other people will say, hey, if you think a prop is gonna work, go for it. Some folks say, well, you should use certain kinds of props in certain situations. So like many things about self-taped auditions, we're still working out the kinks, I guess, you know? There's probably not any one definitive answer. Personally, I think that props are essential for certain things. For example, if you're on the phone in your scene, you don't want to fake it. Hey, what's up, buddy? You want to actually use your phone and you want to talk on your phone like, hey, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Yeah. Or if you're talking into the phone like it's a speaker phone and you know how we get when we talk to our speaker phones. Oh, listen to me. Listen, listen to me. We do stuff like that. So you want to do that in the scene with the phone. If you're using the phone to check your email or text message someone or look Google Maps or whatever it is you're doing on your phone in the scene, you should really do it. And don't fake it. Don't tap the phone distractedly while you're looking elsewhere. Don't do things to the phone that you wouldn't be doing for that task. For example, if you're on the phone, you probably wouldn't be swiping like crazy. And if you're in Google Maps, you'd be pinching and stuff and doing things like this. So make sure what you're doing in the scene is appropriate to what you'd actually be doing with the phone. Make it authentic. So in that case, a prop is pretty important, right? Similarly, if we're drinking something, if the scene calls for us to take a sip of something, he takes a sip of his soda. I'm really gonna take a sip of my soda. I'm not gonna pretend to. I'm not gonna fake it and go, I'm not going to have an empty an empty bottle. I'm I'm going to have an actual drink and I'm going to take an actual sip. It doesn't have to be alcohol if you don't want to drink alcohol in your self-taped audition. You can fake it with colored water or tea or whatever liquid is appropriate for that particular alcohol you're drinking. I have done auditions where the character was supposed to be drinking a beer and it was specifically mentioned in the script. I found myself one of those aluminum cans that had the twist off top, and I saved it. So it was actually empty when I started to do the scene. I just poured water in it. It was aluminum, so you couldn't see what was inside of it. Having the water in it gave it the same weight as if it was filled with beer, and I was able to drink from a beer bottle. So that worked great. Many instructors will tell you that unless the prop is specifically mentioned in the script, you probably shouldn't use it. I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb to follow. But by specifically mentioned in the script, it doesn't mean it has to be called out by name. It means that the script has to reference something that is absolutely critical to the scene. Another great example, the doctor makes a deep incision in the, in the cadaver. So maybe you're doing a autopsy scene for a you know, law and order or some police show. You may not have a scalpel in your hand and you may not even show it in the frame, but that scalpel is important to the scene. You need it to make that incision that's called for in the stage directions. So you're gonna want, you might take a pencil, pick the pencil up from the nurse's tray, begin to make the incision. So just that motion of drawing that pencil along something makes it look like I'm cutting into a cadaver with a scalpel. So the prop is important even if it's not going to be visible in the screen. Another topic of hot contention is whether or not we should use prop weaponry in a scene, specifically a prop gun. But there are many auditions you're going to need to record self-taped auditions for that require you to be holding a gun in the scene. If, if you're playing a police officer or a special agent or uh, you're an, uh, a spaceman with a ray gun, whatever the gun might be in that scene, 
you have to indicate it somehow. You could potentially do that below frame as well, depending upon what the scene is calling for. So let's say, for instance, they ask you to enter the scene with the gun at the ready. You could have your hands below frame and enter like this. So I'm just doing this. You could even fake it with a pen or something and keep that below frame. But it's important to have that prop be a part of the, of the scene. If the scene is very explicit, and this just came up recently, and it calls for that gun to be visible in the frame, for example, if you're going to bring it up to your head and pretend you're committing suicide or you're threatening to or um, or you're supposed to be holding a hostage and you're supposed to have the gun at the, ho at the hostage's head, whatever the case may be where that gun needs to come into the frame, I strongly suggest you do not use a toy gun or anything like that. No green water pistols, no plastic toy guns. My strong suggestion in that case is this is one of those rare occasions when an actual prop weapon might be useful. I would not bring it into the frame until I absolutely needed to. I would bring it into the frame, do the business that was required according to the stage directions, and then I would exit it from the frame as quickly as possible. I don't think that should be something we fake with toy guns or with finger guns or miming it. I think that that would call for one of the rare occurrences we would use a prop weapon in a self-taped audition. I would sh shy away from showing the prop weaponry in the self-taped audition as much as you possibly can because so many CDs have indicated that they don't want to see prop weapons in the self-tapes. Just because so many have said so, my recommendation would be to try not to do it if you can avoid it. But if it's absolutely called for by the stage directions, I say go for it. Now here's a point I want to make about that. There's also been discussion about ignoring stage directions. And I agree with that to an extent. I think the problem is that the definition of stage directions is too vague. So I personally break it down into two categories. I call some of the stuff we see in the script a scene note, and I call some of it a stage direction. A scene note might include stuff that tells you where you are and what you're doing at the moment. Uh, standing out in the rain in, uh, in front of a um, purple neon sign and uh, I'm holding the gun to my head. That's all scene notes and I pr would probably strongly suggest you ignore all of that. You don't want to have your stage lighting set to purple for the scene. You don't want to have rain coming down on you somehow if, if you could do that. You don't want to be wearing a raincoat or holding an umbrella. You could ignore all of those scene notes. But if later on in that scene they're telling you a specific direction he draws the gun from the holster and holds it at the ready. So you would draw the gun and hold it at the ready. That's a stage direction. That's different from a scene note. You can ignore the scene notes because they don't make sense to try to worry about them in a self-taped audition within the confines of this little square we're in. And with our you know typical plain backdrop, we don't need to worry about all of the scene note stuff. But if it's a specific stage direction regarding the prop and its usage in the, in the scene, that's pretty critically important. So you want to indicate that action with the prop. And sometimes it means bringing the prop into the frame. He takes a sip of his drink. So I would reach down and pick up my drink and take a sip. Now you'll notice I turned and I tried not to raise my, my bottle up too much. You don't want to do, I'm going to have to put a cap on it. You don't want to do this in the, st, in the STA. And block your face from the camera with whatever you're drinking. So I would keep it over here, turn slightly. Just take a quick sip, put it back down. Same thing with coffee mugs or beer mugs or tea cups. You know, a slight turn of the head, a little sip, put it back down. While we're on the topic of usage of props in self-taped auditions, I'd like to share my screen with you and go over some stuff that I found on the internet about it. And we'll see just how many different opinions casting directors have on this subject. I found this article from Marcy Leroff, uh, last updated 
so maybe it was written sooner than this and then updated in uh, 2021. Should you bring props to an audition? 10 CDs weigh in. If I want an actor to have a prop, we'll provide it. I was casting a film at a kid's about kids at a magic camp and we provided a deck of playing cards and told them to be prepared to use them. Another CD said, a cell phone, pen, and a rolled up script used as a gun or knife is fine. So I would agree with that if, as long as that gun or knife is below the frame with a pen or a rolled up script, you want to keep that out of frame because that would look silly and be distracting and it would take me out of the scene if I saw the actor holding a pencil or a rolled up script and pretending it was a gun. So I would suggest doing that just so you have it in your hand and keep it below frame. Another CD said, I'm sure we all have nightmare stories about props. One of mine involved a gun, not funny. Most likely talking about a real gun. And I have heard stories about music videos and other pr projects where the talent brought actual weapons to set. And that is a huge no-no. Personally, if I were involved with a production and somebody showed up on set with an actual loaded firearm, I would walk off set. It's not acceptable. And Helena Hutchins certainly proves that. We don't want any more of those kinds of accidents on set. Another was an actor throwing real $100 bills across a desk while chewing aspirin that made him choke. That one was pretty funny. Ah, uh, I don't know about that. Choking on aspirin doesn't seem funny to me, so I'm wondering who this CD is. <laughs> no food. I once had someone eat a bologna sandwich in the studio in the middle of a 12-hour casting day. Well, it was a bologna sandwich, so I would agree. <laughs> but if it was something really yummy, no food. So let's keep that one in mind. The worst was in the casting of Holy New York, a famous dart scene. An actor brought a dart and threw it right at the director's head. Mmm. Yeah, not good. No need for that. It's the actor's audition, not mine to say whether or not they should use a prop. If they want to bring a prop, fine by me. It's up to the actor how they deal with it. I would agree with that. I would suggest be much more sparing about bringing props to an in-person audition. It's a different animal when you walk into a room and you're live with people there, as opposed to a self-taped audition in which you're alone in your space and you are completely and totally in charge of what you are doing and you can do multiple takes and pick the right one that works. Walking into a room with other live bodies in the room and having a prop with you, things could go wrong and you don't have a redo. And something like this, throwing a dart, oh my goodness. You might be able to do that here at home and know that you're not going to hurt anyone because you're alone in the room. But taking a dart into a room full of people and throwing it, not a good idea. So treat your self-taped auditions a little more differently than you would treat an audition in the room with living human beings who can be injured by props. I have no problem with props. The only way the actor, the only way the scene becomes about the prop is if the actor lets it. Oh, that's really good advice. And that tells me a lot about the actor. I would agree wholeheartedly. A pair of glasses can take over a scene if the actor isn't skilled. Yeah, glasses can be problematic. As you may know, I work as crew as well as being an actor. And when I'm on the other side of the camera, we often have to deal with talent wearing glasses because there are reflection issues and the glasses tend to hide some of their face and they can be distracting and they can draw attention away from the actor's facial expressions. So glasses are definitely something that can be problematic and they, they do cause problems on set. If you can do your self-taped auditions without glasses, I would strongly recommend it. Some actors need them to, to read the teleprompter or perhaps the scene actually calls for the character to be wearing glasses. In that case, you do what you can with it. Try to minimize the reflections and try not to make the scene about the glasses. Don't get preoccupied with them. Some people have nervous habits and they fidget with things. And if you're fidgeting with your glasses and taking them off and putting them back on or cleaning them incessantly, that can be distracting. Not to say that some doings are bad because oftentimes that might work really well to take your glasses off and clean them, put them back on. That could work, but it has to be motivated. It has to be appropriate for the scene. 
My rule of thumb is that you can use anything you can carry with you on a normal day. Cell phone, water bottle, coats, scarves, purse. Once you've had to think about it and put it in your bag, it can be distracting. I love behavior and using things can help with that. But if I need something more specific than what you normally carry around with you, I will provide it. Now, the first thing I thought when I read this is, for many people in this country, it's totally normal to carry around a gun. And lots of women keep them in their purses. And lots of guys carry them in their belts. So does a gun count as something that you would normally carry around with you? I would say in certain parts of the country, maybe, and depending upon the self-taped audition you are doing and where it's going and what it's for, it might be a little more acceptable than it would be in other parts of the country. By the same token, I don't necessarily think that I would automatically assume a gun qualifies as something you would normally carry around with you. So I'm still back to my initial advice, which is if you can avoid showing the weapon in the frame, avoid showing the weapon in the frame. Even if you're a hardcore drug dealer with a gun, you know, bap, 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 or, or you're a cop or you're playing the Punisher or a superhero that's, you know, carries two guns, whatever the case may be, I strongly suggest that weaponry stays out of frame unless it's absolutely required by the stage directions to be in the frame. I had a role of someone delivering a puppy. An actor brought a very large live dog and did the scene handing the dog to the reader. It was kind of crazy. No animals. However, one person brought a stuffed toy puppy to deliver to the reader. That's, that makes more sense to me. I would never bring a real animal to, a, to an audition. Would I, would I use a real animal in my self-taped audition? Possibly. Because again, as I said, you are in control of your self-taped audition surroundings. And so working with a live animal in a self-tape is a completely different thing than bringing an animal to a place and holding it with you while you're in, in the waiting area. And what if it piddles on the floor or worse? Uh, what if it go, gets out of control during the audition and starts barking or tries to bite someone, heaven forbid? I don't think bringing a live animal to a live audition is a good idea. But if you're in the comfort of your own self-taped environment, your own home studio area, and you have your dog with you, and the audition is for a dog food commercial, then by all means, see if the dog will cooperate with you. It would be probably be better than holding up a stuffed dog. As my favorite teacher, Howard Fine, says, when you can do the real thing, do it. Because reality breeds reality. And if you're trying to do something that looks fake, it creates disbelief. Not only in your viewers, but in yourself. And as an actor, that'll put you in your head. So if you really drink from the cup, you're never going to have to worry about that putting you in your head. If you really use the phone authentically, you're never going to have to worry about that phone putting you in your head. And if you really use the prop weapon authentically, you know, proper stance. And I strongly suggest that every actor research CQB, which is close quarter battle and proper weapon stances, because almost every action show you ever appear on that wants you to hold a weapon and and enter an, a space and do cop things and do army things, CQB is going to be the tactic you would use. When entering a room, you're going to do what's called slice the pie. You're going to clear the room and make sure there are no enemy assailants or threats. You're going to use the UDA technique, which is observe, orient, decide, act. So research those things, CQB, UDA technique, slice the pie, learn how to hold the weapon. In, in CQB, the weapon would be held close to your body because if you hold it out like you might normally do, an assailant could take it from you. Because you're in close quarters, you would keep the weapon close by. That kind of authentic physicality will make you look better in your self-taped audition and make you look more like an actor they want in their show. Many of the roles that we're going to be auditioning for are supporting roles where we don't have a lot of lines, but we might be in the background for a lot of the scene, holding the weapon, moving around, securing the location, doing police things, doing army things, doing marine things, um, doing secret agent things or superhero things. 
So we want to look authentic in the frame while we're doing those action oriented things. So researching this stuff can make your self taped auditions one notch above the rest, level yourself up. So that's my discussion about the usage of props in your self taped auditions. I hope this was useful to you. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to the channel. And remember, if you want to join a bunch of your fellow actors who are serious and dedicated and will motivate you to keep doing the work, please visit actorsfeedbackforum.com. Link in the description. See you next video.